friends, we are back for the next session of the one and only Bob. We're continuing our reading after a very interesting session yesterday about Bob and his life with Julia and how he's really adjusting to now being a pet because that's something that he's not necessarily very used to um, from living in the wild. We're going to continue this story. Uh, we left off where Bob, Julia, and George were about to go to the park, which is um, the code word for the zoo where Bob, um, where Ivan and Ruby live. So we're going to hopefully get to interact with our old friends again and um, hear from them. If you're following along, we're on page 70, and it's titled, Good Words, Bad Words. I've never met a dog who didn't get a big old grin on his kisser when walk slipped into conversation. Dogs understand more than you might think. The Nature Channel says we're about as smart as the average human toddler. Two-year-olds, my fuzzy rump, were a million times smarter than some babbling rug rat. There was a dog on that man's best friend show, supposedly understood like a thousand human words. Border Collie, I think. Those guys need to switch to decaf, meaning they're very, very energetic. The narrator was gushing about this wonderful dog, and I'm like, well, duh, Brainiac, of course we understand people. Not everything, mind you, and some of us are more attentive than others. Depends a lot on just how interesting our humans happen to be. Certain words will really cause our ears to perk up. The classics. Treat, walk, frisbee, bacon. And don't forget the swear words. Vet, bath, fireworks, vacuum cleaner. We always hear those. Clock versus moon. Julia and I wait by the front door while George says goodbye to Sarah. I think maybe the hardest thing for me about being domesticated, a pet, if you insist, is that I can't control my own schedule. If I had my way, I'd hang out with Ivan and Ruby all day, every day. Unfortunately, humans love their clocks. Dogs, we use the sky to tell time, like any sensible creature. Sky says it's dawn, time to eat. It's noon, time to eat. It's afternoon, time to eat. It's dusk, time to eat. It's midnight, time to eat. Point is, it's always time to eat. Dogs have a thing for the moon too, like wolves and coyotes and our other relatives. No calendar for us. Moon looks like a claw. Moon looks like half a pancake. Moon looks like a tennis ball. Moon looks like a claw again. A chunk of time has passed. But humans, nope, that's not enough. It's not a chunk, it's a month. It's not just dawn, it's 6.32 a.m. on a Thursday. And boy, oh boy, we better hurry up and go to school or the office or change the baby, but who gives a woof about feeding the poor, starving, sad-eyed, grumbling, tummy dog? After a spell, I got used to the comings and goings of Julia and her mom and dad, but it keeps changing. Julia leaves early for school and is gone most of the day. She returns home excited and energized, good sense mostly. But every now and then she comes back smelling a little... Like me after a visit to the dog trainer, battle weary and ready to crawl under the covers. So this is very interesting because we're maybe hearing that Julia isn't always having the best time at school. Um, dogs have a very keen uh, um, scent and they can smell different emotions or like it's hormones, but they can smell different feelings that you're having. And Bob said that he's he notices that some days she comes home and she's energetic, she's really happy, but some days she comes home and she's really sad. That's very interesting. Sarah, who was pretty sick for a while, is feeling fine again, thank goodness. But she went back to work and she'll oh and she's away all day too. And George, who has a job at Ivan's place, works five, sometimes six days a week. That means it's just me and the guinea pigs a lot of the time. I have a doggy door and an out and an outside run but it's not the same as toying the neighborhood with your person. Peering without a potential audience, peeing without a potential audience is like talking to myself. Sometimes I'm the teeniest bit jealous of Ivan and Ruby. They always have someone around, which is crazy, I know. I'm free and they're not, but there it is. I told you, I'm not a saint. So this is the first time Bob's kind of saying he's jealous of Ruby and Ivan a little bit of their life. And it's interesting because he views his life as free but he views Ivan Ruby's life as not free. And I, I guess technically he is free because he lives with Julia. The shelter. I know our route to Ivan and Ruby by heart, and I can't help tugging a bit even though I know I'm not supposed to. 
it's been a couple of days since I've seen my pals, and I need my friend fix, like I need air and water and belly rubs. We don't live far, down to the end of the street around the corner. Good news source there. Then a few more blocks. This is Julia and little Bob. He is tiny. When I walk Julia, well, okay, I suppose it looks like she's walking me, but I beg to differ. There is a place we pass that always makes me jumpy and bummed. It's the animal shelter, and I know it's a good place, a space for pets who don't have a safe home for their own. When I was abandoned on the highway, just a few weeks old, a nice cage with a soft towel in it and a bowl of fresh water. Well, I would have given just about anything for that. Still, when I walk by and hear all those desperate barks and meows and squeaks, it gets to me. Sometimes having great hearing is a pain. Thing is, I realize I have a home, and the gang in there doesn't, and I try to think about stuff like, I don't, I try not to think about stuff like that, you know? I mean, it's not like I can do anything about their tough breaks, right? And in fairness, maybe those animals aren't like me. I've always been resilient, hardworking. Maybe some of those guys even made their own bad luck. Don't get me wrong. I try to be a nice guy. I do what I can to make the world a better place, sure. Chat with the guinea pigs, lick the strawberry jelly off of Julia's hand, do my wagon dance when the wrens come home to make them feel good. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. But it's like I said before, you gotta look out for numero uno, which means number one. Guess that's why the shelter harsh is my mellow. It's just, you know, I'd rather not have to hear those guys every time I walk by. Makes me sad. Reminds me of old days. So Ivan, I mean Bob, is telling us that when he walks past the shelter, he gets really just upset that those dogs are in there and it's very interesting that he said there's you know there's really nothing I can do for those animals like what can I do for them and that's kind of maybe a little bit foreshadowing I'm hoping maybe that will be an adventure we go on but I don't know I knew this guy back when I hung out at the mall with Ivan and Ruby nice dog named Julius basic mutt maybe some lab and golden in there somewhere he'd gone some hard time at a couple of shout shelters one of those dogs you knew who had seen more than his share of the bad stuff the world can throw your way. One ear bitten off, scars, a limp. Julius lived in his backyard, winter, spring, summer, fall. Chained up mostly. Flies on his food, empty water ball way too often. Still, he always had a nice word to say when I'd pass him on my daily rounds, checking out the neighbor's trash cans. Once I saw his owner, again, that word step onto the back porch. Julius was barking, but he had a good reason. A stranger just pack, passed by. Barking is what we're supposed to do in those circumstances, right? Maybe he's the UPS guy. Maybe he's a serial killer. I mean, come on, we're not the FBI. So anyways, owner came out, big guy, mean looking, gave Julius a hard kick in his boot, yelled, shut up, you fool, disappeared. Julius looked at me, kind of embarrassed. We kept talking. A few minutes later, the owner came out again, put some towels on the line. Julius headed over, tail between his legs, cowering, saying, I'm sorry, I love you. I am yours, 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 with this whole dog being. But I completely ignored him, headed back inside. He's having a rough time, said Julius, when the guy was gone. He's a jerk, I said, because subtly is not my strong point. No, he loves me, he does. He has a funny way of showing it. Human, said Julius, licking the sore on his leg. You know, how they can be. Do I ever. But we gotta stay true, love him, forgive him. I thought about that. Thought about that a lot. Why, though? I finally asked. Why do we have to forgive them? Julius looked shocked, then confused. As if I just asked why cheese tastes good. It just does. That's the way it is, he said. That's what we do, Bob started to reply, but I managed to hold my tongue, which is not easy for me. It's a very long tongue with a mind of its own. There's no point in making Julius feel worse than he already did. Later that morning, I found a half a turkey sandwich, gave the whole thing to him. Well, okay. I had to taste first, but still. Um, this reading makes me so emotional. Like, I feel like I'm going to cry a lot in this book. I feel so sad for Julius because to hear him get abused he's being abused by his owner which is, means his owner isn't taking care of him and is hurting him pers purposefully um 
and to hear that Julia still loves that owner is very sad to me because no dog should ever be treated that way and it's just so true that dogs are very loyal and very loving and they forgive you so easily and they are just the best creatures in the whole world. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Forgiveness. Seems like forgiving humans is one of those doggy things we're all supposed to do. Like having zoomies or doing bed boogies. It's written into our canine souls. Well, somehow, I don't get into that. I didn't get that memo. The one that apparently went out to every other dog on the planet about forgiveness. Why should I forgive the humans who tossed me and my siblings out into the night? When you forgive, you lose your anger. And when you lose your anger, you get weak. And when you're weak, you can get hurt all over again. That's what we're getting at. That's on page 82. So this is an interesting topic because it's a topic that is mainly focusing around animals and dogs at this point. We know that Ivan and Ruby were abused at the hands of Mac with the claw stick and just having them in an enclosure that wasn't right for them. But, you know, we forget about Bob and we didn't necessarily know too much about his life and what he felt and what he went through. And hearing it now, it really makes sense why he's a little bit guarded. Um, he's tough to humans and it's because he didn't have the best experience with them. And a lot of dogs don't have the best experience with human and it's sad. And that's why we have laws and um, regulations to correct that behavior in humans and to take dogs away from people that don't deserve do dogs and treat them horribly. Um, I could never hurt my dogs and I know that none of you could either. But this shows you that the world isn't always sunshine and rainbows and people aren't always good. And we, the good people, have to do what we can to make sure that we protect animals as much as we possibly can. So if you are with me, we're going to continue to read this and continue to open our eyes to the truths of bad people in this world and maybe um, inspire ourselves to speak out and act up and help the lives of animals all over the world. We'll think of ways to do that next time. I'll see you then.